Hi, I'm Ross Rosenberg. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to talk about the difference between conditioning and gaslighting. Conditioning is when you want to alter behavior through the delivery of a reward, a consequence, or the removal of a reward. If we think of classical conditioning, basic conditioning, we think of Pavlov and his dog. Pavlov conditioned his dog to salivate when the dog heard the bell ring. And how he did that was every time he would ring a bell, he would feed the dog. One day he rang the bell and didn't feed the dog and it would salivate. And from that point on, every time the dog heard the bell, the dog would salivate. So we know that's the most simple example of conditioning. Another example of conditioning is you can have a severe dislike of butter and it is traced back to when you were 10 years old and you didn't know it. You contracted a stomach flu and you ate something that had butter in it and you thought, or maybe your parents told you that it was food poisoning. And the idea of eating butter again was associated with getting sick. If you eat butter, you get sick, it's conditioned it's automatic. It's not that butter made that person sick, but it was a consequence that was related with the event. Conditioning can be a habit. It can be a, a fear. It can be an emotional response. It can be a lack of emotional response where you do something and in the case it's not helpful and you want to stop it, it's difficult because you unconsciously and consciously keep expecting to experience the consequence. Now, I, this is not my attempt to explain conditioning because, oh my gosh, it can go and I can go on for hours, but I want to differentiate that from gaslighting. So conditioning in the hands of a pathological narcissist works this way. Every time you ask for something they don't want you to have, they will punish you because the punishment is painful. You then think before the next time you ask for something similar, cause you don't want to be punished again. And then there'll be a point that you actually stop asking for what you want because you know that it's not worth the punishment. So you have been conditioned to stop a behavior, stop an emotional expectation because you want to avoid the consequence. Gaslighting is not the same as conditioning. An example of gaslighting could be when a spouse wants to go out and hang out with her best friend. With her best friend, she has a blast. They have a lot of fun. But the pathological narcissist, the gaslighter, does not want his partner to hang out with this friend because he or she is threatened. And so he, we'll go with a he, um, will manipulate his spouse's environment so that they believe that it is not helpful and not healthy to be with that friend. So they have to create changes in the environment to prove to their spouse that this friend is not good for them. It is not through conditioning, like you're yelling and, and they don't want to you to yell anymore. So they just decide to not see their friend because they don't want to deal with the consequence of his bullying. But instead you get them to see how this friend is not good for them you introduce information, distorted information, untrue information, manipulative, manipulated information that this friend is hurtful and that by hanging out with her or by um, enjoying her company, there's going to be a consequence. You have to manipulate the environment to make that person believe that this friend doesn't like them or love them. You're implanting untrue information 
in a way that convinces the other that you're trying to watch out for them. You're trying to be their, their friend. You're trying to confuse them by introducing what seems to be a fact, but actually is a carefully manipulated lie and introduce that to the person you're trying to gaslight. Then they go, oh yeah, you're right. And eventually you start to believe this friend is not really your friend and you stay away from them. So what happens is because your gaslighter implanted a false narrative or false reality that you accepted. So now you don't want to be with your friend. If we look at conditioning, the pathological narcissist will want to change a person, manipulate a person, influence a person by altering their environment so that a, uh, they experience a consequence, a punishment when they want to hang out with their friend. Every time they go out with their best friend, Judy, um, you pout, you get angry, you get drunk. And your point is that they're going to learn that there is always going to be a punishment if you continue your friendship with your Judy. And eventually, because you're an SLD, which according to my human magnet center book, um, you're kind of tied to or entrapped by the narcissist. You choose to not see Judy anymore because you don't want the punishment, but the gaslighter is not going to control you with the threat of punishment or for that matter, a reward, but that, that complicates things, but it's also a form of, of conditioning. But instead of getting you to avoid an adverse stimulus or a consequence, he wants you to believe that Judy is not good for you. And so he's got to distort your reality. So I wanted to teach you the difference of this because recovery from self-love deficit disorder or codependency is hard. Gaslighting or conditioning requires you to understand and overcome so many individual processes that sometimes are very difficult to reverse or solve. As important as it is to understand the difference between conditioning and gaslighting, it's actually more important to understand how they fit together. And that is when you can see the true malignancy, the true evilness of the pathological narcissist. He or she uses any of their weapons, their techniques, their strategies to break down their victim SLD codependent in order to overwhelm and control and eventually dominate and entrap them. And whether it's gaslighting, conditioning, and the various forms of narcissistic abuse and so much more, they will stop at nothing to get what they most need is complete control and domination of your life. So it's so important for me to explain that gaslighting and conditioning are separate, but they more often than not go together. Following is a video excerpt that I recorded during a session. I am hoping that it will further exemplify and explain this very important distinction between gaslighting and conditioning. The difference of conditioning and gaslighting is gaslighting, um, you are brainwashed to want something that is not good for you. And you do it because you think it's good for you and it's good for your partner. Um, you, your thoughts have been twisted and you're doing it because of this logic that was um, implanted not because you're afraid of the consequence or you want the reward. And so if you have been asked, if, if you would have asked for that extra money, he would have like before confronted you, you're selfish, you're needy, you know, what about me or yell at you? 
you would know if you bring it up, it might not be worth it because you don't want to deal, get punished for it. And so you just hold it in. Gaslighting is where you don't bring it up because you believe you're selfish and, and you feel sorry for him. And you don't want to like, you know, as much as you need it, you realize that you often exaggerate your needs and are, or like are histrionic and don't understand. I mean, it's a different approach or a different solution for gaslighting versus um, changing your behavior. They're both difficult. You have made incredible progress over getting the voices out of your head of it's wrong. It's bad. What about him? It's like, you like had this look on your face, like, yeah. And I deserve more because no, you no longer were turning yourself against yourself in order to benefit him. Mm -hmm. And the conditioning was you weren't afraid of what could happen. Everything will change with him. And my prediction is you're going to find out that he is a very weak person. And that was the power you gave him was gaslit power and conditioning power. This is the perfect time to go in without the impact of gaslighting and unsubstantiated fear. Because a lot of bullies and manipulators um, are actually cowards. And once you get once once you get strong enough to stand up for them, you start to see they're they've always been more afraid. If he starts complaining about woe is me, my parents, yeah. and you you identify it as uh, manipulation, mm-hmm. and or you believe it doesn't matter because you've lost so much valuable psychological personal resources in your life because of his manipulation and or you identify he's just trying to like um, manipulate you that you observe and don't absorb and what you see is something pathetic you're and when you observe it it has no impact on you Mm -hmm. and that's when you start to see what's uh, real and what's not real and even if he if it is real and he does get mad and he does fight back. That's where conditioning comes in. You can tell yourself, I don't have to back away because he's mad because he can't hurt me. Or if I get hurt, the fight is more important than whatever he does. Mm -hmm. And I I think you're going to find out that people like him are just cowards. Now, I don't, it's not always the case, you know, like you can have like these, you know, pathological narcissists that will like pick up a gun and, and go into war and, you know, have plenty of valor and, and they're still horrible people. So thank you once again for visiting my YouTube channel and supporting my self-love recovery community. Should you want to know more information about the company that I started, Self Love Recovery Institute, the book that I wrote, The Human Magnet Syndrome, and my many educational resources, don't hesitate to email us at help at selfloverecovery.com or go to our website at selfloverecovery.com.